Hey, buddies! Potato McWhiskey here, and it is time to enact vengeance upon Babylon. Oh my days. I have been waiting for this moment. That is a cavalry. Good God, he's got late game units. Now, the good news is we do... Oh, well, we're dealing with Crusade here is part of the problem. But we should, in theory, if we're able to get a crossbowman or two to the front line, we should be able to deal with cavalry. Uh, we're also getting pretty good culture, so we should get to cores fairly early. I think that's a industrial era. But yeah, we got a we got a little bit of a problem, M mostly just because of the crusade in here. So I, I think it might be good for me to get a missionary and try to convert this city. Although then again, maybe it would be better for me to get an Inquisitor to convert the city. All right, let's move this guy into the city. Who am I going to focus fire? I think I'm going to focus fire the cavalry to try to bring him down because all of my units are in range of him. Now, we only took down about a small chunk of his health, but this will be an opportunity for me to level up these um, these Dombries. We finished the Prasat over here. We definitely want the Aqueduct to max out our faith. So we'll spend 10 turns getting the Aqueduct. We'll probably want to get a Harbor in here. Um, it's a good harbor city. It's a plus three harbor in there. That'll take care of our trade route. Um, eventually, we might want to go for theater squares, but I think we're just like a little bit busy. We could opt to build a Domri in here, but the production in this city is actually pretty bad, which makes me want to get a builder in here. I do have the builder card plugged in into my government. So I think getting a couple of this is this is an opportunity for me to finally get some builders. That's what's going on there. Now, I could turn one of these elephants into a core. Um, but then I wouldn't have a great general, so we'll leave it as is. I'm slightly worried about this cavalry doing big damage alongside the musketman. No, it looks like he's retreating, so we just need to get him. We just need to push him out of this goddamn city situation. So then you step there and take your grape shop promotion. I would need several turns of work in here. So I've managed to repair the Prasat. Let's go back to producing Domries. Do I want to get the stable first? I think getting the stable first would be okay. It'd be another plus one production in the capital. We could go for the armory. Yeah, I think I think we go for the extra production. We do have Kabul as our city state and that'll allow me to crap out a lot more Domries over time. Um, let's try to make this line infantry back up. I'm going to put this here to provide this guy with a little bit of combat strength. He's in pretty rough terrain. He's got 40 defensive strength. This guy isn't super strong, so we might be able to make something work here. We really need to just push him out of this town. And I need to get this apostle to get an inquisitor. Because if I can get if I can get inquisitors over to that city, then like we're in like really great shape. Um, let's keep moving these cr potential crossbows forward. They will become useful, hopefully. I'm just hoping he doesn't attack here. Okay, he went into the water. Now going into the water is actually a big mistake on his part because it makes him quite vulnerable to a variety of things. Let's push you back. We can shoot there. You have a promotion. We'll take grape shot. You have a promotion. Potential kill. We can kill with the galley too. I'm going to put you in the front line. I'll move this archer forward and turn him into a crossbow. Move you forward, move you forward. And we'll continue to damage this line infantry. There's a Buddhist over here. That'd be great if they could convert the city for me. It'd be really, really helpful. We have finished the harbor in Lingapura. We really need that builder. However, we have to get that lighthouse. So I'll probably move a builder over from Harry Alaya. I think ancient walls would help defend this city a little bit more effectively. We do have another trade route. And so it would be nice for us to get that. But again, I'm just like a little bit, I mean, like a crunch, right? I, I, I'm, I'm just, I can't get through um, the situation we're in. We got we to gotta just grind it out. Right, there's cartography. So you have a promotion, so I can step you forward a tile and take shrapnel. And we're continuing to level. If you shoot, you should promote, which means you would also like to shoot. Almost got that kill. He's probably going to step back and heal. Got limited tiles that we can make use of here. It's okay. Little bit of maneuvering never hurt my people. I will go for the shipyard. That'll be quite a useful building for my coastal cities. I just don't know how much infrastructure I can really get. I'm wondering if I put my galley here and then take plus one naval range. Is that useful? Maybe. Right, there's mercantilism. I'm going to go ahead and take volley on you. Let's secure the kill on that line infantry. I'm going to step you back and take the crew weapons promotion. I'm going to step you back a tile and shoot the warrior monk. We should get kills where we can. 
and you guys fight pretty well. It might be good for me to get more galleys in this city to provide even more adjacency combat strength. Um, we're going to... We definitely just want to get to these techs, so I'm going to grab the Enlightenment. I definitely want my Tier 2 government. Let's grab the Apostle. We can get... A Inquisitors next turn. Um, do I want to go for Reformed Church? I think Reformed Church or Theocracy is the correct play here for my government type. Um, the discount on faith purchases for purchasing units will be useful. All right, let's see. I'm just hoping he can't nail me on kills. And it looks like we're just barely surviving. Barely. So we could hide you back a tile and we could move you back a tile to keep you safe. We could move you forward. Let's have a look at the potential promotions. If you shoot that warrior monk... Well, I think I'll get the crossbowman to kill the warrior monk. All right, we've th we're thinning out or killing his army here, which is exactly what we want to do. Come on. Okay, he lived. That's annoying, but that's fine. We haven't lost a Dombra yet. It's just like a very careful dance we're doing. Let's go ahead and start the Inquisition. Boom, there's plus one error score. We will get ourselves the Inquisitor. And... Everything's looking okay. Few tiles I still need to repair, so we're working on that. All right, we took a hit. That's okay. I am going to move this crossbowman here. I'm going to move this archer back, this archer back. Get the archer out of the way of the Domries. You're going to pop back here to a safe position. And we're going to just take a little bit of time to heal up these Domries. Most likely he'll come back with a vengeance. That's fine. Finally get this Inquisitor over here and potentially convert this city. We'll go for the encampment in the capital. We finished the encampment in Anchor Wat, which means I feel safe now to start spamming Domries relatively quickly. I'm just like, I don't know how many I'm going to get, but I'm going to get a few. Um, we got a builder in Harilaria. Let's try to improve the tiles in here. We definitely want a trader, so I'll go build a trader in here to try to keep this city going um, in terms of infrastructure. It's like, do not have enough production to do all the things I want. I mean, if he raises the city, that's fine. It's not what I want to happen. But if that's what he does, I'll accept it. So we did big damage. I'll move the archer into the city. He could choose to kill. He could choose to take Zanzibar. We will take it basically immediately right back, which is kind of interesting. I'm going to put an envoy into Musket. Got a builder chomping away. Curious to see what he will do. I think a couple of lumber mills in this city would really help out. He went for a kill, and he got it. I think we just need to make sure we take out this cavalry, and the city should be safe. Block that tile with a cheap, expendable archer. So we lost a Domri, which is fine, because we're now producing them. It took us a long time to get to that point, where we were finally reproducing Domries. I mean, now we've, event if we've actually converted the city, meaning he no longer gets the Crusade belief, and that should make our lives so much easier. Yeah, that would have meant a dead archer if he had Crusade right there. So let's, let's try to clear this guy and then take our levels. You've got a level. Now, you've got all your combat strength stuff, so I think going for shells here is the move. Theoretically, if we had gone for forward observers, I think we take... Um, yeah, I think we take shells here. That'll give us plus one error score. It's a highly level Domri. Uh, let's get the Domri's into position. We're going to push a wide front in the near future. You're so close to a level. We do have walls in Zanzibar now, so it'll have a chance to survive most hits. Lumber mill in Harilaya. That's another plus two production, really helping the city out. There's a warrior monk. Now he no longer has the benefit that I was talking about. I think I want you to there. You to here. I want you to there. I want you to shoot that guy to get your level up. I want to. I would like to get a level up on you too. And then I just want like a little bit of experience on you. Perfect. So elephants are in position. We're going to move everyone forward to begin assaulting these cities next turn. Goal is to have archers behind them to provide support bonuses against potential enemy units. Um, let's see what we can do. Can we make something happen? He does have quite a bit of military strength, but he won't be benefiting from crusade anymore. And that's a big deal. All right, we still need to take out all these cavalry units. But there is mass production and reformed church. We're going to go ahead and switch to, not monarchy, sorry, reformed church. We're also going to plug in the Wars of Religion card instead of veterancy. Raid, I'm going to keep. Conscription is fine. Serfdom is fine. I would like holy side adjacency. That seems important to me. Um, Republican legacy is amazing. I think it's better than wars, or I think it's better than raid. But I haven't been raiding much. And then I think Merchant Confederation for the little bit of gold. I think this is a reasonable setup here. Perfect world. I could maybe plug in chivalry. All right, let's go ahead and confirm those policies. That's a pretty reasonable setup. You are going to take the promotion for Grape Shot. Because remember, the, the it doesn't matter that we do damage to a city. The important thing is that if we can sweep the board. 
and get rid of all the enemy bullshit. Let's blast... Well, you have a level, so what if you can get this kill? Unfortunately not. So... I would rather get the kill than miss a level. He has a settler too that we could yoink. Um, the important thing is that we are very efficiently killing off his army. Now, we also need culture because we need to find the um, core tech. Let's have a look. Any text back here that I've missed out on? Nothing is really necessary here. I could go for bombards. It doesn't seem necessary really. Not until I have a uh, highly leveled Domries or a Renaissance great general. Um, I'll just pick up buttresses. I'll pick up these cheapo backline techs. Um, I got water mill in here in Zanzibar. We could go for the shipyard. I think the thing to do would be to get a holy site in here. Um, there's a fantastic... Well, let me think about where the aqueduct is going to go. If the aqueduct goes here, it hits three farms. If the aqueduct goes here, it hits two farms. Um, and it's kind of a similar story for the holy site. So I think I would like the aqueduct to go here and the holy site will go here. Do I go aqueduct or holy site first? I think I go holy site first. Remember, there's just so much culture in that building for me uh, and growth, which also gives me really good passive science. I'm making 57 science per turn, which is more than Zhao, who is a science save, honestly. Um, but we're slowly stripping away his military. All right, let's begin the casual advance. Now, if he's had field cannons, this will be a problem. Let's take the shelves promotion. Let's we'll step forward, blast you. We'll step forward, blast you, you cross the river, you guys stand behind to give support adjacency bonuses, bring the great general into a position where he hits everyone, and keep backfilling with this builder, you grab me a lumber mill, I have another builder to send to Lingapura, you're getting that trade route for me, that's perfect, in the capital city, we have finished this, would love to be building diplomatic quarters, not possible, must make domries. We need to refill the front line and also when we're able to actually combine them together we'll need like pre-built domries ready to combine. All right we didn't take an excessive amount of damage. We took some damage but it wasn't insane. We could take out Mari really quick actually whereas this encampment would be really tough to take out which means I think the encampment is a better target. It's going to pop you back for a heal. Remember we don't have to take them out on the first pass. It's completely not necessary. Also, I should totally get myself another courser to act as my capturing unit. I don't actually have a unit that's capable of capturing right now. I could move this pi uh, spearman up. A farm is fine. Let's go ahead and keep on moving. Little farm on the wheat there. Refuse peace. Let's have a look. He's milling about. 100% production towards city. No, I don't. I want to ban production in city centers, honestly. Prevent any more walls being built. So I'll fully invest in that. And I would like to have fewer grievances. I will live with the grievances I take if I have to take them. Okay, so city center buildings will build faster, which is fine. We can live with that. Let's move you back. Move you back. Um, blast there. Blast there. We're doing okay. Let's keep you healing. Would love an apostle with the healing ability. Um, let's see if we can dig for one. Also going to faith buy the stupa because that's an eco building. It gives an amenity. Buy the apostle because if we can find the medic promotion, it would actually be very useful in this game. You go to there and you go to there. We'll get some tile improves next turn. We're taking hefty damage, but the damage we've done to their cities is also pretty hefty. So we'll just take a step back and heal. Uh, we should be ready to step forward and tap these districts again. I think I've got to focus fire on this central encampment because if we can blow that up, we just need to start stripping away walls and then it'll start opening up opportunities for us. Uh, what's the best gold trade route in my entire empire? It is from Zanzibar to Singapore or from Zanzibar to Ternate. I think I'll do Zanzibar to Ternate. Might be better. Plus I could actually use a road through here. So you have managed to actually turn yourself around into a decent city. Care to get me a couple of settlers so I can do something up in the north? I think that's a reasonable thing to do in my situation. All right, what do you got? Ah, oh, Apostle operates as a medic providing healing. Um, literally what I was hoping for. We're going to turn this into a chaplain. So this is now a medic apostle. Very useful. We'll grab a mine here on the jade. We'll put a quarry here. Finally, the city is started to get some production. It'll soon break the 10 production milestone. All right, you boys are healing up. World Congress has been met. I think I'm going to get um, Zanzibar to trade with Anchor Tom, mostly because I want to road through here because I'm tired of slowly moving my units through this choke point. So it'll take a little while, but once that road is built, it'll be helpful. Seven gold from trading with Indonesia. That's perfect. Yeah, what are we doing in here? Definitely want that improved. Want lumber mills. We could chop a little bit. Production of the city kind of sucks if we chop it, so we'll just have to play long term. All right, let's move forward and hit Mari. 
I think if we could take out Mari, this actually puts us in a much better position to take a Shunna. So I think that's got to be my main focus. I'm going to move these archers out of the way. Medic is coming forward to provide healing. My this Dombri has a level up, which is really great, actually. This Dombri is ready to join the front line and start blasting Mari as well. Definitely want to pick up printing because it gives plus one diplomatic visibility to all of the civilizations, which is essentially plus three combat strength against all other civilizations. So that's an incredibly powerful ability. Very, very useful technology when you're at war. Yeah, I think lumber mills. As much as I dislike going for lumber mills, I think in this particular game, because my land quality is like a bit shot, I think it's necessary. Let's move you out of the way. We'll move you forward and you can blast the city. So we've almost taken down the walls in Mari. Move this guy forward forward to here so he can provide a healing zone i'm gonna step you in there i'll move the inquisitor out of the well i'll actually i'll should move the inquisitor forward but you are now providing healing in this city to everyone who's healing around or inside the city so that's a fantastic thing we have a courser coming to the front line who can act as the city capturer um let's have a look at mari is this the, does this belong to mari i would love to pillage this um nighter i would love to honestly i'm gonna raise that city so if I'm raising that city, I should get started on a settler in my capital to retake this land because it just built everything wrong. Like it's all in the wrong positions. Is that something we do later though? Maybe. We're definitely raising Mari. So I'll get one settler to do that. Let's harvest the stone here in Lingapura. That will boost the lighthouse. Finishing it, I'll be able to overflow that into a trader and then I'll probably internal trade with the capital to keep this city going And then I might just hard build the shipyard in here to give this city potential not a great holy site Honestly, this is actually a fine holy site. It's a plus two right there. So yeah, let's grab that holy site That's fine. Don't want to go shipyard or holy site. Um Let's make the sh Let's make the trader happen then the shipyard then the holy site get another copy of jade online i could probably sell off some of this jade and i wonder if there's luxuries i could buy there are that'll boop bump me up into higher amenity levels um, okay so you're gonna fall back here you're gonna step forward and now the city of mari is like officially unable to shoot the city itself can't shoot it has a has a district here that can't shoot i would love to pillage this if i could get it it would be amazing let's keep the healing you could heal for one more turn Honestly, all you need to do is shoot once and you get a promotion, so you're ready to heal anyway. But yeah, now we can start to surround the actual city of Mari. I can definitely pillage the campus. I don't know if I can pillage that nighter, but we can start to, like, form a battle line that more carefully attacks this district. Like, these two tiles here now can only be hit by one district. They actually repaired that district too, which is kind of annoying. We'll figure it all out. It'll all happen. We can build lumber mills on jungle at last and probably is the right move. I'm going to trade with the capital here for three food, three production. That'll speed up the city's stuff quite a bit. Oh, he's moving forward with some line infantry. He sees the city's in danger. I'll move you to there. I'll swap these two. I'll shoot you. Shoot you. Shoot you. You might die, actually. Let's give you a little bit of adjacency. I might have preempted this settler a little bit early. That's okay. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Things actually kind of worked out a little bit in my favor there. Um, you're in a position to take crew weapons. You're in a position to get there. That's a minor defeat, but what do we got? Like this? Shoot that guy. Shoot that guy. Shoot there. You have a promotion. Shells. You're a little bit harder to crack. Now, if I shoot here and he doesn't die, god damn, the prophecy was fulfilled. My dead crossbowman. <laughs> Um, that's a minor defeat. I don't want to take that fight. I do need to hit the city of Mari again soon to prevent the walls from being rebuilt. But aside from that, I think I think we're good. We might lose a crossbowman here. All right, mine down in Lingapura, and then I'll probably just go build that. F oh, wait, no, there's another lumber mill. Yeah, production tiles are king. All right, we lost the crossbow. That's fine. We can deal with that. Scientific knowledge has been boosted. You go ahead and pillage that. That's a hundred science right there. Now that's a ranger. Ranger danger. Oh, damn, I need to I need to deal with this. I think the city shot is maybe the weakest thing here. What does it do? Like 40 damage. Okay, 40 damage is not that much compared to 48. We'll shoot him. Shoot him. Shoot him. Good, 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 good. He'll be gone soon. We're starting to invade the actual lands of Mari, and the only thing defending it is a ranger. I'm going to gamble on researching... Oh, urbanization is a little bit harder to get to. I, I'm going to gamble on researching opera and ballet and hope that one of these two tech is nationalism, which will allow me to combine units into cores. Oh, big hits coming from down range. This line infantry came out of nowhere. 
Um, let's pillage that again. There's printing. That's plus three combat strength right there. So we got a lot on our plate. This guy definitely needs to die. Let's keep shooting the city to keep its health suppressed. You can step forward to here and we can slowly begin chipping away at this district again. Uh, remember, even if we're not making huge progress or gains on like each individual turn, we are leveling up these units so that they'll have extra range. And once they have range, we're unstoppable. All right, so we got a settler. I'm tempted to send this to the north instead of going the way that I was going to go. Um, I lost Suzumity of Kabul, which I'm not okay with. Let me see, what is Kabul's mission? Construct a preserve, that's never happening. I need to get Suzumity of Kabul back like ASAP. Um, are there any cheap, yeah, there we go, naval tradition. We'll get that quick free envoy. Um, I'm going to immediately move Amani. You see, where are you, Amani? I'm going to reassign you to Kabul because I want that. I just, I need it back. Can't let it go. Let's get the shrine here in Zanzibar. And then we can get the Prasat. Once we have the Prasat, we'll look into getting the aqueduct to keep our faith flowing. We've got a ton of faith coming. It actually might be worth it now to go for Grand Master's Chapel because this will allow me to buy land units with faith. I have my settler here. I think I start sending it north instead of the way I was going to. Um, it would be good to get gunpowder. That's plus one production on quarries. It's like a pretty reasonable thing to do. Trying to make short term decisions. Um, I have an enemy unit here being annoying. I can make use of my religious units to make him go away. The war of religion thing I think is carrying me quite a bit. Plus four combat strength. Helping just, just a smidge in the fight. All right, you took a pretty heavy hit. It was only 33 damage. Let's keep blasting this. Need to bring down the health of Mari. You're healing too quickly for me. Pillage this. I think I would like to just capture the city of Mari ASAP and maybe pillage it, destroy it. So I will start sending that settler the other way um, to get her done. You have a promotion if you go here. Oh, I created the Mobius elephant where they live on top of each other. Oh no, he's over here. Oh, that's weird. Huh, that was a very weird thing that just happened. Can you attack down into the water? Can you attack down into the water? Nope. That's annoying. Rolled low. Should have had my Inquisitor adjacent. That would have given me uh, bonuses. So now we're just waiting to bring down the health of Mari so we can capture it. Goddamn line infantry coming out of nowhere. All right, let's take Grape Shot. We want to master blast this guy to take him out. Can't quite get that kill. That's okay, though. The goal isn't always necessarily to get the kill immediately. Sometimes we're just setting up for a kill eventually. All right, let's see what happens here. So he killed himself by attacking me. That's fine. Now I think we can take the city of Mari if we get enough elephants in range. One, two, three, four. Oh, just barely not enough. All right, you take the shrapnel promotion to keep you safe. Damn, that was that was close, man. More Domries are coming out of Anchor Wat, which I'm very, very proud of. We'll need like a lot of them, so I'll just keep mass producing. We got the Shrine in Zanzibar. Let's go for the Prasat. We, we have to eco behind this war. That's the thing. Um, we need to be, we need to be doing economy because his culture and science is higher than mine, which means I am falling behind. All right, there we go. Naval infrastructure. Can we take back suzerainty of Kabul? Boosh. There it is. So now we should be able to safely travel through his territory, actually, and get to here and settle that city to the north. That's okay. I have another settler making his way over here to retake the city of Mari's position because I just, I hate the city of Mari. It's, it's got to go. Like, what is this holy site, dude? It's actually one of the worst holy sites I've ever seen in my life. Um, it's a classic Civ 6 AI holy site. I blast, blast, capture. City is mine. Raise, which didn't feel very good to raise a city. Gonna be honest with you. But it does now mean that I can actually settle a good city here. <laughs> Oh, Christ. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to settle this tile. We'll put the holy site here. We'll put the aqueduct here. And then that's a beautiful city. And then from there, then on, that's like whatever we want to do there. Let's go for opera and ballet like we had planned. We're hoping to hit nationalism. It took a little bit of damage there. I need to keep this courser alive. So I'm going to retreat the courser to a safe position to get healed up. We'll take comparison because I like depredation. Big fan of depredation. Um, I'm going to move the archer out of the city. I'm going to move this elephant back your healing Let's hide our pins so we can see what we're doing we definitely need to get rid of this guy so maybe we can just master blast him into oblivion this district is starting to finally get ripped down am i raising Ashnuna? i think i am i can settle a better city there i know it's wild what i'm doing right now but at this point remember my win condition 
isn't, oh, I, I, I get a victory screen. My win condition is that I erase Babylon. That is the win condition I have set for myself. I hold myself in contempt. He's begging me for peace. His army has been a, a bit obliterated. Now, here's the thing. He only needs to get like one or two strong units to make this a really annoying game for me. Let's condemn the heretic. We'll start moving in a formation to kill this district. And we're getting so much experience from fighting this little elephant trumpets. Um, it would be nice to control Fez. There's not much I can do about it. I guess I'll fight for Fez. Would you fight for Fez? All right, we got our settler into position. Bonk, settle her down. Let's immediately place the holy site. Bonk, immediately place the aqueduct. Bonk. Uh, I'm going to purchase the water mill to give the city plus production and food so that it can accelerate itself slightly. I would definitely like to get a builder in here. We're going to immediately go for the holy site. I'll buy a builder to give this city a little bit of momentum. We're going to scoot you forward a tile, scoot you down a tile, and start blasting this district again. Once we get the walls down, it can't fire back, which is a huge W uh, for the marketplace of elephants. This district is basically dead now. I could sacrifice my courser to take it out, but I'd be worried about a potential counterattack with no other melee unit to take over the fight. I'll move my courser forward, but I'm not going to sacrifice him yet until I start blasting a Shuna. Um, and the reason for that is because if I take this out, this guy will be the only thing that can be seen by a Shuna and any potential range unit inside it. While I would take out the district, it would leave me vulnerable to a counterattack. So I need to be a little bit more careful. I'm not willing to sacrifice a, what is this, a 200 production unit for a district, right? We did finish the Prasat here. Um, there is an absolutely disgusting campus in this city. So I'm wondering, maybe I can sell off. I like hiccuped and burped at the same time there. I'm wondering if I can sell off something to get a little bit of raw cash. There we go, 200 cash. Maybe I can buy that tile and actually plonk down a plus five campus here to help me out. In terms of promotions, I think it would be nice to get Reina, potentially. Uh, Moksha would be great too. I could appoint him into Zanzibar use him as a loyalty guy. All right, we're moving the settler up to the north. And the reason that we're capturing all this land is really just to get control of the luxuries up here. This isn't really necessary to our long-term win condition. However, this land will provide us with a trickle of resources, money, and uh, just generally potential as well. Like a little bit of science, a little bit of culture, a little bit of gold. Um, and it's a relatively inexpensive investment for me to get control of this land. I do need like a little bit more cash because I'm a little bit worried about stuff appearing up here in the north. There we go. There's enough cash so that I can upgrade you into a skirmisher. So you have twice as much melee strength. And we're now in a position to where we could settle this city next turn. Feeling very good, feeling very safe. Go ahead and get that mine up because that's going to be the most important tile for growing and producing in this city. Blast there. How much health does it have? It has zero health. So we'll kill with the courser. And now we can begin the Siege of Ashuna. You have a promotion. You don't. You will have a promotion next turn though if you shoot something. So I'm going to move you forward and take the expert crew because I don't need the ability to shoot naval stuff. I think I've actually come to respect Kabul a lot as a city-state. Right, we just need to get as many of the elephants in position for a next turn bombard and any damage we can get on the city this turn is great. Okay, that's a man-at-arms there. I'm not willing... Um, let me see. He's got two movement. I don't think he can get to us and attack us. He doesn't have a road, so I feel fairly safe to take the shot and get the level on this guy. He might die, but those are risks I'm willing to take. Let's inquisize the city just to convert it real quick. Okay, I was hoping that he wouldn't take that damage, but he did. He just took a little bit too much damage. That's fine. It happens. Let's move you one tile to the right. We'll move you one tile to the right. We'll move you to here. Um, and we can start shredding the walls. You have a promotion. I should promote when applicable. Because I need to get to that plus one range ability. There's a mine and, and it's down to 40 turns to produce in here. That's going to be great. I'll take this farming tile too. Um, I might take that now just to allow the city to grow slightly faster because high speed growth is way more important for a brand new city than production. I mean, you need both, but like right at the advent of a brand new city, production is a little bit more important. Unfortunately, I won't be able to get a golden age unless I'd been able to convert more stuff. If I had a missionary up here, maybe if I converted Kabul, it just it just wasn't in the cards, really. That's the problem is uh, just wasn't going to happen this game. Um, but we do now have a city up here. We'll be able to get a trade route. Remember, trade routes scale pretty well. Um, a builder would be fantastic over here. So I'm just going to go for the granary because the city only has three housing. So the granary will provide plus two, which will allow the city to grow up to four population instead of two without penalties. Um, here's the thing. When the city hits two population, it'll start taking housing penalties. And then we'll go for the monument so that I can expand its borders. We would like to get a builder up there. 
Um, the rest of my cities are just a little bit busy um, as it currently stands, so we'll just have to wait. Um, if I had 250 gold, I would upgrade. Oh no, I wouldn't have two crossbowmen, so yeah, it wouldn't work actually. I was going to say I could upgrade another archer to a crossbowman and then I would boost metal casting, but that's actually not a viable option for me right now. So I know for a fact that he could do up to 30 something damage, so I'm just going to go set up a healing station. Probably shouldn't be in a floodplain, but whatever, I've already made my decision. All right, let's have a look at the possible promotions. You have a promotion. Now I could go for shrapnel or I could push for forward observers. I think I push for forward observers here. Now I'm at a point where I have so many domries uh, and the land is like that little bit more open. Like this was very awkward land. You could see just how important terrain was to dictating how difficult it was for me to break these cities. But now Ashuna, this is practically falling down. It's practically easy to break. I will go ahead and take Heartbeat of Steam. I think that's just like a totally fine build thing. I don't have any industrial era buildings, but if I do build any, I'll get error score from it. It's not a great one in my current situation, but it's the best, best of a bad situation, right? That's, that's often what you're doing. So the reason that working three food over a two food tile is so good um, is because normally this city would have a food surplus of two, right? Let me, let me show that. How do I... Why does it have a food surplus of three? Two food? Ah, the watermill. So actually, with the watermill, it becomes less important for me to work high food tiles, and the production tiles are actually slightly better. But anyway, the, the point of building the watermill is, um, normally if you're working a two food tile with a city, uh, the city is gets two food from the city center, and you're working a two food tile, and then the population is eating two food, which gives you a surplus of two. So if you can get plus one food, you'll grow 50% faster. And if you can get plus two food, you'll grow 100% faster. So this city, right, but surplus four food is growing 100% faster than it normally would. And I can actually accelerate that quite a bit by continuing to pump farms in here. And while farms aren't the best thing in the world, um, it does provide you with a trickle of science and culture. Ooh, cuirassiers. Now those are scary units. Um, I think we can hold the line against them because he doesn't have crusade. What's the base strength of a cuirassier? I think it's like 64. Queer, cuirassier is a 64 combat strength unit. Now we will be yeah, so he will, he will, he will have a chance to one shot us, um, particularly if my units are isolated. But I think the main thing I just need to get done here is to rip down the walls in this city so the city can't shoot us, and then we can take our time doing some pillaging um, because there's like there's some pretty good pillages in here, right? We've got a aqueduct, we've got a commercial hub, theater square, holy site, a couple of quarries and industrials. Although I think that might be in the city of Babylon, um, but there's definitely like a few pillages in here that are worth worth exploring. The fun thing about going, about like winning a war, is that after you win the war, all your troops are like ultra chads. Like, they're like the phase above or below, depending on your position. Like, because like, look how leveled these domries are. If I just convert these into artillery, literally the world would fall beneath them. Um, so there's metal casting. We can, if we decide to find or get nitre, we can upgrade to bombards, uh, which is a totally reasonable transition out of domries. Actually, wait, I don't think these guys do upgrade to bombards, do they? Yeah, they upgrade to bombards, but like, they'll be highly leveled bombards with potentially extra range and all that jazz. We are kabooming the city. So the city is now ready to be taken, but we're not necessarily going to take it immediately. We're going to focus on getting some pillages in here. A pillage for culture. There's opera and ballet finished. Did we find nationalism? Nope. So we need to hit urbanization. So we gambled incorrectly. It's not the end of the world. I've got two envoys. I can steal Fez back which is great. There's plus two era score. And it looks like he started to build the Colosseum, hopefully in Babylon, because we can't raise that one, so we would keep it. Do I kill Fez or keep it? I think I keep it because I get, because Fez's ability is that you gain um, science when you convert a city to your religion. So that seems quite good in a game where I've got a religion. I will say this though, the grudge match is going amazingly for me right now. I've got my next settler coming out because I've got to be raising the city of Ashuna and resettling it because it's garbage. Um, it does feel bad to raise an anchor what? although it's actually not actually finished, so maybe it's fine. Ooh, that courser got slapped. Let's step back and take the heal. Uh, anyone who's not in a position to get a good pillage should opt to fight the courser because we do have good damage. Let's set up a new heal station right here. All right, settler complete to take over the city of Ashuna. Oh God, I don't even have a Diplo quarter, man. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man. I would love to get a Diplo quarter, but I don't think I can justify it. I'd love to get a terracotta army. That would be really fun. But I think we just need like a couple extra Dombries to fill out the army. That way we can, you know, keep the front line filled, have guys that can retreat. Okay, yeah, you took damage. That's okay. He's going for you. I'm going to pop this archer out of the city so you can retreat back and heal there. You're going to move forward. 
Let's get the kill. That's a level up on you. I don't want to pillage the dam. I'm going to move you to here. You have a level. You don't have a level. There's a good pillage right there. Make sure we keep that city's health suppressed. We can also keep leveling off the city. Can we get that kill? Perfect. You step there, take that promotion shells and everything is starting to come together in a really nice way. I've got this skirmisher up here protecting the north where I'm going to be sending my next settler. We've finally unlocked banking. We don't actually have many commercial hubs, so it's not necessarily a really useful tech for me. We will pillage for culture. You're going to step forward and be in position to pillage. We're going to pillage for faith. Remember, we're, the city is getting deleted, so pillaging is the correct move here. And once this courser is healed, then we'll move in and swiftly grab it and destroy it and then resettle it with this settler that's here. What do I research next? I think I just research any boosted text. There's nothing I really need to aim for right now. Now, technically, I could navigate my way through the tech tree more efficiently if I was using like if I was remembering boost and stuff like that, but I haven't played Sid in a while. I'm going to Faith by the Stupa. Um, I could Faith by some Domries, which means Dom reproduction in my capital is a little bit useless after this because I can Faith by all the things that I need. Um, I think I'll Faith by a backup Courser and I may as well Faith by, I think Knights are like slightly stronger. So I'll Faith by a Knight to act with my army too. I did finish my Settler in here. Now this city has been like a little bit neglected, but it will need to be defended. So I'm going to grab myself a quad. A quadrireme to protect the city. It really should be like a caravel. Yeah, we need a caravel because there's all sorts of barb units in these waters. And if I finish this harbor, it'll just get deleted. I know from experience, right? I know I could build that harbor and mostly be fine, but I don't have a way to get this. Could be a um, Panama Canal. I don't have a way to get this, this galley over there to help, basically, is my problem. And I'm really tired of my harbors getting pillaged, so... I'm not letting it happen again. All right, Ashuna, let's pillage for this. You could make an argument that I should plug in while I'm pillaging. I could take out conscription and plug in raid. That would be actually a pretty decent transfer of resources. Like there is 178 um, thingies. And I think that's totally reasonable because now we're actually in a position to do some pillaging. You might think like, wait, why is Potato getting expert crew on a unit, a siege unit that can move and shoot? And the, the, the simple answer is, um, when this unit upgrades, it's going to lose the ability to move and shoot without a great general. And that promotion leads to the plus one range promotion, which is the most overpowered siege promotion in the entire game. I think I got one more pillage in me and then we can blow up this city. I'm going to finally send this caravel on a little bit of an explorer. Galleys can do some early game exploring, but I feel like once you have caravels, you could do some real, real exploration. I'm going to stop purchasing Domries and Anchor Watt. I've kind of neglected this city. I'm going to Faith purchase the Stupa in here. because That's plus one amenity. It'll give it a little bit of an amenity buffer. I could really use a builder in here and I could send builders to the north. I'm going to quickly grab the granary to allow... Well, actually, I don't need housing in here. I never built my harbor, so it would be good for me to get that. So I'll build my harbor because I'm missing a trade route. Uh, maybe I'll quickly squeak out a builder because there are like two tiles here. This mine and this pasture that are not improved and also this lumber mill. So yeah crack out a builder. Maybe I'll crack out two builders to get a few build charges to send to the north. Yeah, that seems reasonable to me. Plus three air score for our first campus with three or higher adjacency. That means the campus in Zanzibar just finished. Let's go ahead and faith purchase the stupa. I don't really have any other use for that. And the, the stupa is just a nice building, right? Plus one amenity for 300-ish faith. Uh, I could buy the library. I think I'm better off using production. I'll grab that library plus three science and one more pillage here in Ashana. And then we're going to blast the city apart. Boom. That will level up this courser. We will, of course, raise the city. Now, where exactly do I want to settle instead? If we look at the possible locations, it's here, here or here. And mostly it's a loyalty issue uh, in the short term. But if I think about it logically, I think the best place is to put a holy site right there and an aqueduct right there with the city going on this tile. We basically replace it. Now we could just shift everything to the left slightly. Scooch one tile to the left. If we wanted a better chance to deal with the loyalty, which I think I'll take in the short term. Uh, we need to kill this man at arms, mostly just for the experience. Because um, we're going to start running into uh, really strong cities that can, like things like Babylon. Uh, and we're going to need that plus one range that we're kind of fishing for now. Okay, a couple more Domries are finished over by the capital. Looking at Anchor Tom, probably about time that we started to build some infrastructure. Like we got a Diplo Quarter we can build. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get that. The reason we want the Diplo Quarter is that it will allow us to have better control of city-states. Uh, if you place it adjacent to the capital, 
or adjacent to the city center, you'll get plus one envoy. And it'll also make enemy spies operate at a lower level. And spies tend to target your capital for Pingala. So making it harder to take out Pingala will give me a little bit of resilience when it comes to my culture and science, because Pingala is actually giving me a ton of culture and science here. Spain has denounced me mainly because I'm raising cities. I'm fine with that. Like people are going to be mad at me because I'm doing this whole thing. But to be honest with you, I'm I'm beyond diplomacy at this point. Like I'm on the I'm on the phase beyond. Like if there's a plane of reality where diplomacy exists, I'm beyond it. I'm in a different reality where I do not give a fuck what anyone thinks about me because of what's been done to me. Like I am an anime character right now. That is that is what I am. Um, like a, a with a blood feud vengeance pact anime character. Uh, so I need to take out this cuirass here. So a little bit of positioning I think is appropriate. Um, you to there, you to there, you to there, you to there. You can't quite get to. Can you get to here and still shoot? Can you get to here and still shoot? And can you? There we go. I've got everyone in position to shoot one. And the reason I need this is because he's pretty dang tanky. So, so every time we run into an enemy unit like this, it's just a huge opportunity to get experience, especially when we've got Kabul and we're getting double XP. And also some of these guys have 50% experience boost anyway. Oh, come on. Let me kill him with my nice. And then I'll promote you with expert crew. So I think we're going to skip Dermuti and try to just take that through loyalty. In a perfect world, this is how I want Babylon to die. I will conquer all of his high population cities and then Dermuti will flip to me. I might even I might even kill Rapicum. I think I'll be able to kill this with range. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah, if I have plus one range by the time I get down here, I'll be able to hit it with one, two, three, four, five. Potentially, yeah, five Domries will be able to blast the city. Then I can like just, you know, do whatever I want. I am going to gold purchase the water mill here because it makes such a huge difference to this new, these newly newly settled cities. I think my builder was killed by the flood over here, which makes me a little bit sad, um, but we'll live with that. Let's make sure that we place the holy site because we want to lock in that price. Remember, when you place a district, you lock in its price and its price can no longer increase because their prices do increase over time uh, based on the percentage of the tech or civic tree you have researched, depending on which one you've researched more of. And I'm finally getting a little bit of real scouting information here. I'm hoping to find some city-states. God, this guy already has a Second national uh, park. He did build the Colosseum, which is going to be a great thing for me to inherit. One, two, three, four, five, six. It does hit my new city, which is fantastic. It hits a lot of his cities too. Potentially even Fez if we want to kill that. All right, so look at how thunderously powerful this city is. Like, if I attack this with this guy, we did eight damage to its walls. That's truly nothing. So in total, three of my guys did uh, three health to the city and 30 damage to the fortifications. So you can see now why I've been so careful to try to preserve these guys, keep them alive, keep them together um, and level them up. Make sure I position all my units to be in reinforcing positions. That way, if any one unit is attacked, he has multiple units providing adjacency defense. Uh, I'll just go ahead and use this Inquisitor Conquer or rather convert the city really quickly. Got two more Domries on the way. Really hoping to find nationalism soon. All right, a little bit of a counterattack coming through here. Looks like he just finished walls. No, he just finished the steel tech. No, no, he finished ancient walls in here. Yeah, that's what happened, which is fine. Um, I wish the game would tell me if I'm in this tile, will I be able to shoot the city? Because I'm scared about moving forward and then not being able to shoot the city. I'm also worried about this cuirass here. Um, you need to sit there and heal. I'm worried about this guy being in an exposed position. So I'm going to move, I'm going to swap him to here. Um, move you to there to provide adjacency and also be in healing range. And then we'll start blasting this cuirass here. Remember, it's more important for me to kill the units than the cities. Because if the units are dead, killing the city is easy. But if the units are alive, then they're doing damage to my siege units. My rate of conquest goes down. Could you get to here and still shoot? No, unfortunately not. But this cuirass here will either level up or die next turn. One of the two. Library completed in Zanzibar. It would be good to get the shipyard, although the city has relatively high quality tiles in anyway. I think it's safe for me to get two builders in here to help develop my land uh, on the front here. A lot, of, a lot of my tiles are unimproved. If you take a look at the map, I mean, it's kind of easy to just see where the improvements are and where they are not. So getting through here, getting a few repairs, getting a few builds, that'll be helpful. I'm having to like sneak this settler around the backside of Kabul to get over here, but he will get there. And these cities like... It's only producing two science and like a little bit of culture, a little bit of like it's not doing much yet, 
But once this builder that I just finished over here in Anchor Wat makes his way up there, it starts to like improve some of these tiles. It gives me access to these luxuries. These cities will start to be uh, a worthwhile investment. They do take a rather large investment to get off the ground, but they are worth it, I think. Okay, I sharply inhaled breath there because I was anticipating losing a unit. I would like people to trade with me, so I'll vote for myself there. And I would like the culture bombs if I could get them. I mean, I don't necessarily care too much if I don't get them. It would just, it would be nice. Right, you've taken just a little bit too much damage. Why don't you fall back to heal? Same for you. Fall back to heal. Now, I think one of those cuirassiers died. You could pillage here, and that would be worth it, I think. 140 gold with my current gold income. Why don't you step forward, shoot him. You step forward, take your grape shot promotion. Can I get this kill? I might be able to squeak it out. Let me see. Oh, yeah, just barely. I'm going to follow you back to heals. Remember, I've got this apostle here that has the chaplain promotion that's acting as a healing medic that allows all of these units in the city of Rajavihara to heal faster. So while I don't have many Dombries on the front line, I do have reinforcing Dombries coming in and everyone's starting to heal up. All right, let's take the knight out of the city. We'll move. You can't quite make it to the healing spot. So I'll move you into the city to heal faster and then move you adjacent to the city to heal faster. Um, let's get you. I want to avoid. This is a dangerous tile because I would be getting shot by two cities, city shots. So I'm going to kind of shift my formation up one tile, get you to this position. I can move you even forward and move you to here. You're just a little bit out of range. Now I've got potentially five Dombries blasting the city this turn. And so we should start to see the city take a reasonable amount of damage. So we brought the city down by 25 actual health and nearly halved the fortification rate, 168 fortification health. Tech wise, I don't see any particularly good options. So I just always research a boosted tech because there's nothing I really need to shoot for. There's nationalism. We need this. Now that we're researching nationalism, it does make sense for me to go back to producing Domries to fill out my army. Um, so I'll just quickly grab two extra Domries in each of my cities and then go back to whatever they were doing. And the goal here is just to have an excess of Domries to combine together. I think I want to preserve any Domri with at least three promotions two is fairly easy to get to but three or more um so so basically the the flip side of that is any domri with less than three promotions i'm willing to merge into another domri now if i wanted to be really cheeky i could have like leveled them down alternative trees and then when they merge together you get like a perfectly upgraded but honestly sometimes the heal is actually a really important part of the whole process the promotion heal uh, i mean I'll move you one tile left, move you one tile left, move you a tile forward and promote um, with crew weapons. Blast city, because we need to keep our health high. You're almost leveled, actually. You will level from this attack, which means you're now a plus one range, boy. We brought the city down to 150 health and 79 fortification, so it will fall in the next couple of turns. Right, I finished a builder in Zanzibar. Blue tiles are tiles that I'm already working, so those are good, like, in the builder map mode. I, the, the builder map mode has slowly grown on me. Basically, blue tiles are things that are worth improving. Uh, Purplish, pinkish tiles are tiles that have resources that I'm working, I think. So, you know, it, it, you know, I hated it at first, but slowly but surely it grew on me. He's still begging me for peace, but I just have zero intention of ever taking peace from him. Uh, let's kill this warrior with my knight. Okay, didn't quite manage to get that, but did get a promotion. Pillage the campus. Um, we should maybe let him finish the Oxford, although I can't tell if he's actually still building it, unfortunately. Let's go ahead and take the expert crew promotion on you. Um, forward observers, it would be nice to take, but I think I'd rather just try to break the city's walls this turn or get as close to breaking them as possible. Um, we are like on the verge of that 29 fortification health left, so they'll be gone very soon. Oh nice, we can double pillage on my Corsair here on this thingy and get a get a free tech for rifling. Remember, we need to pillage to catch up because th think of the damage he has done to our economy. Would love to get military science actually. That's a fantastic step forward. Being able to get access to the military academy, I'll be able to build units that are armies and cores. It sets me up for the potential domination if I want to go for it. I don't even know how I'm going to try to win this game. Once, like just let me let me finish killing Babylon first and then we'll talk about that, okay? That's partially why you see me, rather than going like all in on the war and just only building units, I've been trying to build a little bit of economy behind this to keep my culture high. Okay, one of my Domries died because of a Corsair. Uh, sorry, because of a Cuirassier. Can we kind of get a little bit of revenge here? I think it was a fairly low level one, so it's not one I feel very bad about losing. Yeah, I think I'll shoot him and then can we get the kill? Yeah, let's step forward with you and plunder the trade. Move you back left one tile. 
We can break the city's walls. Finally, the city can no longer shoot. We'll take depredation on our coursers because I like being able to pillage, costing only one movement point. It allows you to be much more mobile when you're doing damage to someone else's economy. Pillage for faith. Um, why don't you step in here and pillage that and then step off. The city can't shoot anymore, so I can take my time when it comes to pillaging. Um, you should be able to come over here, pillage this, and then like dart away. Like literally perfect. Thanks for the money. All right, let's start the process of obliterating the city. Although Babylon might be a city we don't necessarily want to do full damage to, but I'm going to because screw Babylon. Um, I need the resources. All right, most of my army is healed up and we're getting good repairs going. A um, little bit of damage taken in here. We lost one Domri. We've got a few more coming. Pop in here, pillage a little harbor, 30 faith and 400. I've got so much faith, by the way. I could have just faith purchased these Domries. What the hell was I thinking? I'm going to immediately do the thing that I should have done. Uh, real quick, can I purchase more luxuries? Thank you. Um, can I sell a luxury? I can. Faith purchase one and two Domries to start with promotions. Russia is denouncing me because I'm killing someone. I lost a knight. I'm okay with that. Um, I think at this point we should just kill the city of Babylon if we have a chance, but that'll probably have to involve a little bit more pillaging. Is this Babylon's? Yeah, it is. Is it on a hill? No, it's on plane. So I can step in here, pillage it, and then get out for a heal. Um, I remember every time I destroy a district, um, every city gets plus two combat strength from districts. So destroying districts actually makes it easy to take the city out. So I'm not just blowing them up for shits and giggles. Let's go ahead and take forward observers on you. Let's hit this cuirassier. Blast the city. Bring its health down. I'll faith buy a cuirassier next turn in the hope that I can use that to take the city of Babylon. Um, I got the caravel here to protect my harbor at long last in here so I can finally build that goddamn harbor. I don't think we're going for a theater square victory. Not when we're turn 188 and we haven't built a single theater square. I think that's way too late into the game to consider it. Um, our best bet is probably, oh, a mausoleum. I mean, I'm never going to turn down a mausoleum. Just literally will not do it. I'll even buy the shipyard to get that like a few turns sooner. Um, there's just, there's no scenario in which I turned down a mausoleum. It's like one of the best wonders in the entire game. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what my win condition is here. I do apologize to Morbus for the extra long episode. Usually when I have these like high combat episodes, I like to make them a little bit longer because very little actual game time happens but it takes a lot of like play time to get through these turns All right there's ballistics we have access to cuirassiers let's move this courser out he can theoretically take the city if i move you there shoot you once shoot you twice can you now capture this please 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 perfect and with the death of babylon his capital city not the player i would call that the end of this episode. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!